reminded today how close we are to the 25th of December and to everybody that date well not everybody but all the Christian side of the world it means Christmas however for some of us it has other connotations uh, one was a very nasty one at sea the other one was one of the most pleasant experiences of my whole life now you probably won't remember but in 1996 a Russian plane went down in the Black Sea and on board were 62 members of the Red Army Choir uh, including some of their beautiful dancers I mean these women were gorgeous and I know because I've seen them live I won't tell you where that would be too long a story now to me the Russians of course were always them we have to and it's still the same today because of Putin and Ezeok but the Russians have one thing going for them that America's lost Britain's lost and most of the Western world has lost and that's a zest for music not for music dollars but for music nobody does it like the Russians so to start the story we were actually heading for Shanghai in fact we were about ugh, 400 nautical miles south of Shanghai and we hit timber in the water quite often happened it's often carried by uh, carried as deck cargo in that part of the world but we had a few well few two quite large holes in the hull no problem as before with containers and after with containers put in the old splinter boxes bit of acro shoring just to make sure the bulkhead stayed in place but this was quite a large ingress of water and um, the bulkhead that was taking most of the weight god how old was that ship I don't know a thousand years old um, and if that went of course the ship would go soon after so what we did was we started to steam astern no biggie lots of ships do that when they've got forward damage it's a bit of a pain in the neck but they're meant to do it anyway even where we were an American warship popped over the horizon and we said please sir can you give us a bit of assistance here we need a bit more shoring for one of our bulkheads uh, we got hit by timber and they seemed around us thinking about it for a little while and then a voice said are you in danger of sinking and we said no but it's damn awkward and half our electrics are gone and any second one of our engines could go it's running very hot oh well you're seaworthy you're afloat you're moving and they nicked off and left us not happy not happy at all anyway we continue going astern and the next thing I know was about five o'clock the next morning the Sun was coming up another warship popped over the horizon we thought well this will be Chinese now we got a problem <laughs> we got, as you know we carried a lot of liquor in the hold uh, I think the word is smuggling that's why as always this story is about a friend of mine not me it's just that I have problems with the third person pronoun so it's easier to use the first but just remember that this is somebody else not me so anyway got closer and it wasn't 
Chinese at all. It was a Russian, which we thought very odd. I've never really heard of Russian warships being in these waters, but they've got every right to be there, I suppose. And they were sort of allies with the Chinese at the time. So we get hailed in English. Do you have a problem? And we said, yes, we've got holes up for it, we've got shoring up, but we're not sure if the shoring would hold. Um, because the weather reports are not good. We will take you in. Fine. And to looking at each other, we thought, does that mean we're under arrest or anything, or are they being helpful? And they put four men on board just to give us a hand down below with the shoring and two engineers to uh, <laughs> assist with the engines, which gave them a big laugh. You know, I heard the word museum mentioned in English a few times. <laughs> so anyway, we said, where are we going? And they said Ningbu, which is just south of Shanghai. And uh, it's got another name actually, but I can never pronounce it. By and by us, they hadn't fired anything at us, they hadn't turned any turrets, there were no machine guns aimed at us. And uh, I went aboard with what was a big surprise to them, Red. Oh dear, the reaction. When she scrubbed herself up, she could do it very well. Hearts melted immediately, borders disappeared immediately, and uh, we had a very nice dinner on board. And then uh, uh, we couldn't actually bring the two ships alongside each other at sea then because it was getting rough. But a boat took us back to our own, and we followed them to Ningpo. Ningbu, I should say. And uh, it's only hop, skip and a jump from Shanghai anyway. And I knew once there everything would be alright because that's a great city. Very western. More than you would think. They love McDonald's. They love any junk food actually. That's why the girls in China started to get more full of figure, if you know what I mean, because they started to eat less rice and stuff, and more chicken and rubbish, but it did improve their figures. But I'm digressing. We got to a shipyard, and there was a lot of gabble going on between the Russian ship and shore, and we were allocated a berth and a free tug, which was very welcome on that occasion, believe me. Usually we didn't take them if it was calm weather, if it was calm weather the, uh, they cost too much. But this was free, so. And the next thing I know, there's all these people coming on board. And they weren't Chinese, they were Russians. And they were fixing the ship with much laughter and all the rest of it. We spent two thirds of the day with them. And uh, it was a bigger job than I thought. And they actually took the plates right off and replaced the forward plates and uh, took down our acro shoring after they pumped out the forward compartment and replaced it with a new pump. And the cost for all this, nothing at all. So we gave them some cases of whiskey, and they like that. They do drink vodka, but their preference even today. If you can find a good Scottish single malt whiskey, uh, you've got a friend for life. Actually, come to think about it, if we did that constantly, all the barriers would come down because the Chinese like whiskey too. Uh, Conflicts would end. The Americans don't drink a lot of it uh, because it's their uh, 
shall we say, almost built into their amendment that bourbon is their drink. And they frown at scotch. <laughs> More wankers. Anyway. Uh, we had that night in port. And we were going to be there all the next day. So this fellow, gee, I wish I could remember. Naturally, it was a Russian name. Uh, but I think we called him uh, Barry because it was Barid Nakopvakjimu, you know what I'm. So Barry, who was a full colonel, said, How would you like to see our choir? And I thought he was talking about his ship's choir. But no, he was talking about the Red Army choir. And we said, Yes, please. So we went by a convoy of coaches. A lot of his crew were with us as well, up to Shanghai, where the Red Army Choir was playing, and they also had some of the Circassian dancers, most beautiful women in the world, they say. Tall, elegant, footsteps that wide when they walked, so they floated. John Cusack, who actually invented the Daleks from uh, BBC, Forget Terry Nation, he just stole the idea. Um, he got the idea of the Daleks from watching the Circassian dancers when they performed in um, Oslo. And they just seemed to glide and there's no loud music and it's the same repetition over and over. Uh, you'd have to watch it to understand but they were gorgeous. Also on the card were the Leningrad Cowboys. They were funny. They take the mickey out of Western music, especially America, but it's not only just in America. They've all got wigs with you know, the big Elvis Presley hair and the winkle pickle shoes and the big Fender guitars. But when they're in conjunction with the choir, saying, Sweet Morning Alabama or Sweet Mary Alabama, I forget what. Fantastic. Never heard a better, rend a better rendition. Then there was the Kinka Dancers. And they're totally different. They are in their Russian costumes, but blue and white, not the multicoloured ones, which are further from the north. I'm sounding very knowledgeable here, but this is what I <laughs> learnt during this visit. And that again was staggering, absolutely staggering. We had dinner with a lot of the uh, singers and dancers, all big men from the Red Army, in, uh, in uniform of course, badges everywhere and metal ribbons and you felt as if you were a dwarf among giants. But they were beautiful people, and I often got the message that their thing was music and dance, not the uniforms they were wearing. So that was a little interlude. So whilst we were there, we actually gave away a lot of whiskey. In fact, I think we gave two pallets worth away. But it was worth it, we still had about 16 pallets down below and we would trade that later on further north in uh, Dalian in China. We were quite sorry to steam out, say goodbye. A lot of people, I'm sure, were quite confused with <laughs> this foreign vessel full of capitalist running pig dogs was getting such a nice farewell. Mind you, I think half the military types were legless by the time we pulled out. But it was great, and we went on our merry way. The night of the performance, I should just go back to this, there was almost a fight <laughs> amongst the <laughs> military hierarchy as to who would sit next to Red. They weren't worried about me. I could sit out in the boy, they didn't care. 
but she had them wrapped around their little finger. And of course she did speak Russian, or one dialect of Russian. Um, so uh, that made all the difference, but they were all in love with her. God, I hate that woman. She could really, really twist men around. Anyway, we sailed. And over the years, the incident became forgotten. And then after more years, even Red nearly got forgotten. But the 25th of December was when that plane carrying the a lot of the choir and the dancers uh, and singers crashed into the Black Sea. This was in, this isn't long ago, this is 2016. Initially I was terribly upset that some of those beautiful people that I met were, had met such a horrible death, but then it hit me. Um, so many years later, they wouldn't be the same ones. But still, they were dancers, singers, and musicians. And the music they made, performed, you can't say performed with Russian music because they live it, something we've forgotten how to do. I know it left me with a lump in the chest. And several times I looked over at uh, Red and she was a flood of tears. Mind you, she had about six military arms round her shoulder, consoling her. She's a cunning bugger. Only yesterday I realised what day it was. Three years come December the 25th. What a day to crash Christmas Day. Um, some say they were on their way to Syria to perform for the troops. Others say they began to perform in China. Well, getting the gen behind the scenes, I can tell you, it was both. They were going to China and then they were going to uh, entertain their troops in Syria. Just the way we do. So not much was different. Now, a trigger that had been sitting in the wardrobe for a long time was this. Red got one too. This you're going to say he's one of those awful dressing gowns that tourists buy in Hong Kong. I can find out where which side is up. But you would be totally wrong. This is pure silk lined hand stitch in gold thread silver thread and in some of the drawings you'll see little flecks of red which is a dye that they use in some of their thread uh, God it's a long time since I pulled this out weighs a ton even though it's silk but I think this one's the only one left in Australia and red well she's dead now but hers is probably somewhere up in Denmark what a gift what a gift that would have taken three weeks to make all hand stitched no machine anywhere um, and I'm ashamed of myself for having forgotten it what I'd like you to do I mean I, I never get comments to, from my videos but this time go into YouTube look up the Red Army Choir look up the Circassian Dancers look up the Kinka Dance and you will find you've walked into a world of the most spectacular music is it music 
you will have the most spectacular existence in a theatre that you've ever had. I think I'm going to do that tonight. Bring back a few memories. Shed a tear or three. Why don't you do the same? Anyway, not one of my usual stories, but seeing as they don't get comments anyway, I might as well throw this one in. <laughs> Have a magnificent day, my friends.